All right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Munya Ida from uh, BioInspire Robotics Lab at ETH Zurich. So um, I have been uh, working on NOVA's local locomotion for um, about 10 years or so, and I built a lot of uh, different kind of robots and different kind of environments. Um, <clears throat> and what we're interested in is basically optimizing the design and the morphology of robots that can behave and make locomotion behaviors. And just want to show some of the videos that uh, uh, representative videos of our robots. So these are robots uh, that uses no sensors, no control, uh, but it shows very dynamic locomotion behavior. The reason is uh, basically we have an interesting mechanical dynamics with elasticity, damping, and all of that. Um, <clears throat> so the, the trick is that the robot is just moving uh, part of the body back and forth, but if you have a good design of the body, it can uh, show very interesting dynamic kind of locomotion behavior. And after 10 years of exploration in uh, of a different kind of robots, the kind of conclusion I reached is that locomotion is not so difficult. It's quite easy if we have a basic uh, uh, stability so that the robot doesn't fall down, and uh, if the robot has enough power or torque or uh, energy. Uh, and I think that most of the, the, the real world robots uh, use this kind of strategy that it can show the uh, robust locomotion behaviors. But the challenge for robotics and engineers here is that, at least for me, is that uh, what if we, if we break some of the rules of mechanical engineering like this, um, and especially if we uh, have no, uh, not enough energy, or not enough torque, not enough power to actuate robots, and uh, that's what I'm going to talk in this, um, this presentation. So one of the things, like you know, mechanical as a mechanical engineer. So one of the things, uh, the first thing we think about is the use of free vibration. So every mechanical engineer knows that they have mass spring damper system and vibrated in certain frequency, it shows a very large amplitude of oscillation. Uh, so why not using this principle for locomotion because it doesn't need so much actuation, so much uh, power. And, uh, and that's why we started uh, uh, exploring this principle. And uh, it's actually quite easy to demonstrate in in practice, that this uh, is the, the first platform that we built uh, with an elastic curved beam with a rotating mass on top of it. And uh, if you actuate it in certain frequency, it shows different kind of free vibration. And here uh, we have two types, two modes of free vibration. One of them is rotational, and the other one is longitudinal oscillation. Uh, and uh, the frequency of these two modes of oscillation can be easily uh, tuned by uh, the um, Easy design by tuning these and mechanical parameters like a mass length and the spring constant. Uh, and if you, if you uh, tune it pr properly, we can use uh, only the, uh, the longitudinal oscillation for locomotion purpose, like a hopping behavior. And this is one of the robots that the one my students built for just, uh, the kid visit in our lab. Um, so if you make this kind of naked, the principle is like this. So it's quite easy that we just put the small mass on top of the curved beam. And if you oscillate it in a certain frequency, uh, it can actually um, hop in a very robust manner. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of interesting to start, uh, it's a, a kind of interesting starting point to explore the free vibration in the context of locomotion. And, um, but, but the free vibration is actually the most hated uh, phenomenon in mechanical engineering because they can easily destroy bridges, power, and other machines. Um, but I think it's uh, interesting to take advantage of free vibration to just change the landscape of uh, locomotion performance of the robot. And I already showed two uh, kind of uh, breaking uh, two rules that we break broke in the, the robot, but we also want to show a couple of other points that we can break based on uh, the free vibration. And one of them is uh, losing less damping because the damper is also important for mechanical system to avoid free vibration but we can actually remove the damping in this case. And uh, so the first thing we did is use the expensive maximum motor uh, with the direct drive actuation and put it in an optimized uh, curve beam. And in this way, we can actually make uh, energy consumption very, very, very low that we actuate this robot to 1.1 volt and 60 million, million ampere, which basically means uh, about 70 milliwatt to actuate this uh, three kilowatts. 300 uh, gram of the robot, and, and we reached uh, the total cost of transfer 0.44, which is pretty good considering the size and weight of this robot. 
And the interesting thing about this is it's a very good balance between energy usage, uh, energy usage between motors and uh, negative work in the body and the motion losses. Uh, and if you put this robot uh, in the, the taco diagram, this is actually from the, our quotes paper. Uh, as we know, this diagram shows body mass against the, the cost of transport, and uh, the, the robots are very um, uh, badly. Uh, in fact, robots have very bad energy efficiency compared to uh, land animals across all scales. But if you plot our robots in this diagram, our robots are quite good, especially in the smaller scale. So it is, it's much better than robots and much better than animals uh, by a factor of 10 or 100. And uh, uh, it's kind of interesting to start exploring why this, uh, how we can explore energy efficiency by using this principle. And uh, as we shown in the, the type of diagram, we can actually make it very, very small because of the, the simplicity of the principle. So we built a smaller robot based on this uh, principle and built a, uh, used the maximum motor 0.3 watt uh, uh, motor with, uh, on, on the, the, the small robots with the mass of 12 gram. And we actually achieved 1.0 cost of transport, which is quite good considering the size of the robot. Um, and we can also uh, make it completely passive. Uh, we put it on, uh, <coughs> put the, make a robot on a curved beam with a really, really large mass, 4.5 kilogram, and put it on the ramp of uh, uh, 0.22 radian, and it actually shows the cost of transport, mechanical cost of transport, 0.22, by using the same principle, and this is actually uh, almost the same uh, resonance frequency of the, the whole uh, um, system. And we can also make it um, heavy uh, with this by using the same principle. But I'm not going to show this in the video because uh, we're going to demonstrate the experiment on, on Thursday. So I, I put actually a large mass on the crop-field robot, and I want to show how show you uh, how the, the free energy can be used in such a robotic system. And finally, um, I would also want to introduce how the free vibration can uh, be used for different kinds of gate patterns. And especially, I want to introduce the, the radical approach that uh, you know, instead of controlling gate pattern through motor control, I want to uh, change the gate pattern by uh, changing the shape of the robot. And uh, my students went sometimes very crazy and they just, you know, play around with different kind of curve structure and they explored all different kind of shapes. And uh, uh, these are some of the results that we can achieve different kind of locomotion behavior by using curve beam. Uh, some of them use one motor, and some of them use two motors to enhance locomotion performance. Um, well, what is interesting here is that the uh, uh, use of uh, uh, free vibration in the arch-like structure, in all of this, it's more like a quadruped, like uh, running and walking in the system. So uh, we compare different shape of the robot. Some of them have a very short uh, spine, some of them have a very long spine. And uh, we explored different um, frequency on this robot. And we found that uh, the shape ratio here, we compare different kinds of shape of the robot. One of them is shorter compared to the leg, and what the other one is, the other end is longer. Uh, the shape ratio really matters in just what kind of gate pattern the robot can achieve. So here we uh, change the frequency to, uh, to see what is the, the maximum velocity we can achieve with each shape. And then with certain shape ratio, we can achieve different kind of the three different patterns of locomotion, but also, uh, but if you choose different kind of shape ratio, we have a less number of gate patterns. Um, so it's kind of interesting to start uh, explore different kind of gate pattern based on free vibration. So I just went through all these uh, different uh, challenges and uh, locomotion based on free vibration. I didn't want to get, I didn't uh, have time to go through all these things. But uh, in summary, I think the free, bi uh, free vibration based locomotion can be very interesting from many different perspectives, especially from energy uh, efficiency perspective. And we use completely new uh, actuation principle in the sense that we never uh, direct, uh, actuate the joint directly, but it's just use very small and very uh, small actuator to induce the basic uh, free vibration. And it, because of the simplicity, the, uh, the mechanism works in very small scale, and you can also uh, explore interesting gate patterns. 
Um, and um, we still have a lot of open questions, and, and th these are kind of things that we're exploring at the moment, that uh, we still don't know how big we can go with this approach um, in terms of speed, uh, size, and the payload. And uh, we still don't know what kind of actuation is optimal for this approach, especially uh, thinking about you know, whether it's rotational is better or linear, or more is better, or we can use a variable stiffness actuators, or we can also think about use of clutches and brakes. And finally, optimal control is still an open question that adaptive oscillator goes really well with this uh, framework. And uh, the big challenge is uh, the how we can do trajectory control of uh, such, a, uh, such a system. So we have a lot of collaborators in this project, especially more of the postdoc, the more of rise in our lab is, uh, is really putting a lot of energy for this project, and I really appreciate our, our colleagues here. And if you're interested in the details of this project, you can uh, visit our homepage, you can find papers and videos uh, there. Thank you very much. Questions? Yes. Uh, I just want to point out another rule that could be broken that Andy uh, introduced a couple years ago, which is uh, the robot that's costly. And uh, Andy showed one that uh, Um, actually, the beam is quite cheap. The most expensive part is the motor. Uh, the one I showed two years ago was a piece of trash. Right. Peter's sign can't pull out the trash and put it on the transfer. You just put it down and it pops out of the rack. Right, right. So, so yeah, I think uh, we, we use almost no budget. I, I don't want to tell this to the, 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 the funding agency. Uh, but I didn't use much money for this project. But, uh, the, the most expensive part is actually how to reduce dumping. And the dumping costs uh, a lot of you know, technology and a lot of uh, manufacturing costs. And the motor is expensive. And if you want to make a really, uh, we also use, for example, the grass fiber for make uh, you know, light and uh, elastic structure. And that costs a lot of money uh, compared to other parts. But uh, I think, uh, but if we don't really care about dumping and, and, and the efficiency, you can uh, make it quite cheap. There are two versions of answer to this question. So one of them, is, uh, the formal answer, is uh, that if you want to do bio-inspired uh, robotics, um, I, I really don't know how to do the stability uh, control for this kind of robots because we have much. If you want to do you know, bio-inspired kind of control stability, you need a lot of sensors and a lot of complicated processes and so on and so forth. And we don't have a really technology in a cheap way, in a fast way to do this. And that's a kind of, you know, the, 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 the honest answer is that the stability is really a tricky thing. And uh, you need a lot of effort to make it, but still you cannot make a, a lot of impact. You know, just we, have, we don't want to make a robot that just stands. Right? And, and uh, if, you don't, if you don't care about stability, you can do all this kind of crazy uh, behavior. And that's why I, I just try to get away from the stability for now. I think uh, that's uh, in the long run we have to deal with this kind of problem in the long run. Yes? There's a question from somebody here. Yeah. Uh, Did you measure the cost of transport with a two meter wheels out of the same motor? Um, wheels can be much better. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, I, 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 I don't. So the data point Wheels can be much better. But I just, I really is interested in like locomotion, so uh, that's, uh, I, I'm not comparing this to it at the moment. Chris? So, you are an expert on low frequency vibrational locomotion, but there is also a regime of high frequency vibrational locomotion. You can go buy little toys and skitter across the floor, and also insect flight, I would argue. Do you think high frequency and low frequency locomotion are the same thing, or is there some fundamental difference? 
that's one of the things I wanted to explore in the small scale robot. The, the video I showed here was actually very high frequency, well, it's not very high frequency. It's, it's, a, it's about uh, 10 to 20 hertz compared to much, uh, compared to larger robots, it's much higher frequency. Um, the, 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 the thing here is that, that we are working in the domain of uh, um, gravity. Uh, gravity. Gravity is the main uh, governing principle of the locomotion here. So if you go smaller, the gravity goes smaller, then, then it doesn't, you know, the other dynamics comes into play. So uh, that's another thing we have to think about. And if, if you want to go smaller scale, we can go higher scale, uh, higher frequency. Uh, but um, it, that's something we have to still uh, pray around. I, I, I don't have an answer for this. Okay, can Sangai maybe already connect this computer where we have a last question from our Andy? I don't have a question, I have an answer for Chris. Oh. I have a lot of that. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. High frequency or low frequency? So I. <laughs> I, uh, I would. Uh, uh, Jane Wang with Cornell started working on intersect flights. I was thinking, oh, we'll be all the same. But then when you watch the movies of insect flight, and you can also see this in um, the movie Wing Migration with Birds, the body motion is essentially zero with one flap of the wings. And so uh, the idea of thinking of it as a sort of discrete discontinuous process, you don't need that at all. And they, they can understand the, the stability of mechanics and so on uh, by averaging the wing force over, over, a, over a step and, and taking it as a smooth process. So it's essentially discrete nature of the dynamics and, and the slow frequency stuff, like walking and hopping and his stuff, uh, is I think pretty different from the high frequency of insect flight. And I don't know if you've seen the videos, but it looks like the insect body is like a rock sitting there in space with the wing going up and down. You can't see the fluctuation. But when, when you start talking about vortex sharing and all that other stuff, aren't you back in the discrete realm? Yeah. You are, but they have pretty good, for example, they use steady state fluid mechanics for the wing model gives them pretty good understanding of the, at least the stability of flight dynamics. It might not get all the lift coefficients just right. So I think the dynamics is very close to a smooth average. It's like when you look at an airplane, you don't pay attention to the rotations of the propeller. It's a smooth force. I think insect flight is close to that. Now vibrating things on the ground, I don't know because I don't know whether the whole body dynamics, you know, it's high frequency because the body is also inside. I don't know if that came to this, but the insect flight came to this. Does that address your question? Yes, thank you.